second, I'm going to get stuck into the webinar now. Thank you. Um, you are all muted and your videos are off. It's just myself that you can see. Just want to say hello. You're very welcome. My name is Susie McElwee and I'm communications manager here at Business in the Community. Um, just to let you know, we are recording this presentation so we can share it afterwards. I'm really delighted that you're here because it means that two things potentially one that you already know about the awards which is brilliant and two is that you're probably planning on entering maybe one or more of our our categories there are 10 categories up for grabs this year so i'm really hoping that from this webinar you're going to get i can hear a few more people coming coming in so you're very welcome join to join the webinar um and susie from bitc just giving a little intro on what we'll cover for this webinar today We'll give you some good hints and tips. I'm going to give you a bit of background on the judging process as well. Our agenda is that um, I'll take you just quickly through the categories and sponsors that are, are the categories that are available this year. Tell you how to enter. I'll give you some top tips. You're going to hear directly from some of our judges that sit on the judging panels as well on what they're looking for in a really great awards entry. I'll explain the judging process so you have your head around that too. Um, and I'll give you some key dates to hold in your diary uh, that are important throughout the whole entry process and then on to the gala event at the, in September this year. And there will be time for questions at the end of this session. So as I mentioned, my colleague Brian is on the call. Um, what we're going to do is open the chat function near the end of the webinar and I'll answer as many questions as I can when we, when we get to that point of the agenda. OK, so um, about the awards then, for the, for the awards have been going for more than 17 years. They celebrate impactful and really inspirational, responsible businesses across Northern Ireland. It's those businesses that are just going those steps beyond profit to make a really to be a force for good in society. And the awards themselves, as well as a the celebration, they're a fabulous opportunity for everybody that attends the awards and for us in BITC to learn more about what is happening across Northern Ireland and also to inspire other organisations to to follow suit and to adopt some of the initiatives or programmes that they have within their own um, businesses and their corporate social responsibility agendas. So if you are committed to building a better workforce, if you are contributing to a sustainable future through your organisation or you're supporting your local communities to thrive or all three, there's going to be an awards category that you'll be able to enter. Um, and hopefully this webinar is going to point you in the right direction to have all the information that you need to make a really um, a really strong entry. Just want to take a wee moment to say thank you to our categories and sponsors here. All our logos are shown on the screen um, beside the, the categories that they've actually sponsored. We're really delighted that Henry Brothers has joined us this year um, for a three year partnership on the awards as key sponsor. So we're really looking forward to working closely with the team at Henry Brothers over the next three years. And um, as far as the categories go, then there are 10 categories in 2022. They are all of them are entirely free to enter and any organization from any sector and of any size can enter within any of the categories, except for there's caveats with two of them. You can see there on the, the kind of the top right hand side, the NI Responsible Company of the Year Award um, is uh, to be eligible to enter that award, you need to be a member of business in the community that has achieved core, which is our standard for responsible business. So there's there's some eligibility criteria with that one, as well as the one to watch award. So the one to watch award, we're asking um, it's member organ business in the community member organizations that have joined from January 2020 that can enter those awards. But all of the other ones open to um, open to anybody at all. I'm not going to go through the detail of all of these different categories. I will just say that if you want to have a look at those in more detail, um, navigate to our awards hub page on the Business and the Community website. That's bitcni.org.uk forward slash awards. You can see there that there'll be short descriptors on each of the categories and there's some really helpful resources that are, are um, on that page that you can download as well. One in particular that I want to pull out 
that I think it would be worthwhile downloading and having a look at in advance of, of making your submission for the awards is our how to enter guide. It's a PDF document. You can you can download it and save it on your computer and share it with your colleagues. Um, but it gives you a really comprehensive overview of the categories, the questions in the categories, the criteria that we want you to elaborate on and, and meet and explain within those categories. It'll tell you uh, what marks are available in certain sections of that entry as well, and the word limit. So um, you, it, it's good to just give you kind of a bit of a heads up on what it is that we're expecting you to, to give us in your entries. So what I would recommend um, before you do actually start with making your entry is visit our website, have a look at the categories and decide which one you which one or more you want to enter. You can enter as many as you like. Uh, do start in good time. You're, you're going to want to give yourself ample time to gather the information that you need to, to make a really compelling entry. And that might mean talking to colleagues who can help and can provide you with statistics or support just to make a really strong entry. Do consider the time frame of your project or your initiative. We're looking for um, projects that have been started and run from February 2021 until now. And um, I would recommend that you register on the Judgeify platform sooner rather than later. Judgeify is a, a, a platform that we use for both allowing people to enter the awards, but we direct our judges to there to score the entries too. Um, and it's it's the case of just signing up um, with your details and then it gives you access to enter any of the categories that you want and the good news is that if any of you have actually entered the awards last year it's the same platform you'll be familiar with it already but your login details will work there too and um, so you don't need to create those again I will flag that you can't share entries between colleagues so if you are joining up with another colleague to make your entry one of you will need to make the entry through your own account um, or you can share login details with each other if that makes it more convenient for you to both edit edit the entry so i am um, Here's a video I made earlier. Uh, I've recorded a short video. It's just about three and a half minutes long to familiarize you with the Judgeify platform um, and just give you a bit of a guide on how to start your entry. So I'll screen that for you now. It's a little bit quiet at the start, so you might want to turn your volume up slightly. I wanted to give you a quick run through of how to use the Judgeify platform to make your awards entry. So those of you that entered the awards in 2021, it's going to be very familiar to you. And the good news is that your login details from last year still work this year. If you're new to the awards process, you're very welcome to the journey. You lot will need to click on this um, button over here just to set up a new account on Judgeify. It asks a few simple questions just about your name. It'll ask you to set up a password for yourself. And that just means that you can log in and out of the platform and amend your entries as you please. We'll go back to the landing page. So once you've got your account set up and you want to submit an entry, press the green button and enter in your details. And when you log in, it will open up a landing page. If you haven't started any entries, yours will look different to mine. I've started a few and it just gives you an overview of where you are with them. Um, if you haven't started, you won't see anything on this page, but you'll see a big button to say submit a new entry. So when you click that, it'll bring you to another page that will show you a drop down menu and will allow you to choose whichever category or categories you want to enter. So for talks sake, I'll, I'll enter fair chance for all. And it brings up all of the details of this category and the boxes that you need to complete to submit your entry. Right at the bottom as well, there will be some space for you to upload PNGs or JPEG images to be associated with your entry and you can use those however you like. Right at the very top, is the only section that is not scored within the entry. So you will be able to see the scores that are available in the notes underneath each box and the word count over on the right hand side of each box. This background and entry summary box uh, will form the basis of a case study if your entry is to win the awards and we'll put that on the business and the community website. It's also a really good way to give your judges a bit of an overview of what your entry is going to be like before they read the real detail of it further down the entry. So once you've completed it, 
um, or you've completed parts of it even, you've got a few options down here. You can either submit if you've finished it off. Submit and add new will take you back to the page where you can you can choose another category to enter into. Save as draft will save it as a draft so that you can go back and amend if you want, or you can cancel to come to come out of the entry at all. So once you've uh, created your entry, it will sit on the, the main landing page like this on Judgeify, and you've got a few options in these boxes. This view option is handy because it allows you to get an overview of your whole entry. And if you press print, you'll be able to save a copy as PDF and send it to a colleague if you wish and to let them have a to cast their eye over it a second pair of eyes. You can also edit your entry here and you can delete the entry here and you can complete the submission if you're ready to go with this button here. So it's pretty self-explanatory once you get into it, but if you've got any problems with comms team, but good luck with your entries. Okay. Um, it cut out slightly at the end there. It was just to let you know that we're, we're here. We're on hand if you need support at any point um, with the platform, but I'm hoping that you'll find it quite um, intuitive to use. So um, here's some top tips for you uh, when it comes to actually making your entry. Explain the obvious. Please don't assume that the judges are going to know who your company is or what it does. Um, and try not to use company spe specific languages or acronyms because it's just confusing for the judges unless you're going to explain what they are in the entry further down. Do emphasize the benefits of your initiative um, and that can be depending on what what category it is that you're entering can be um, for society or for the environment or for your company is important as well. We want to know how it's made your company better too. You will want to give um, clear examples of the impact of your initiatives and we're really interested to see how what you've done could be replicated in other organisations or even has been replicated and inspired other organisations. I mentioned there in the video previously that there's space for, for five images that you can upload to the Judgeify platform. Um, use those to your advantage and um, you can be clever about this and we would recommend if you can just to um, use the likes of infographics to get to get a bit more information across to your judges and um, the less text the better really it should be illustrative with your images but um, you can use these to communicate a little bit more than you you might be able to within the entry with the word limits um, the, the point there second from last is consider if your entry would fit in more than one category. On some occasions, we will get an entry, for example, in the well-being category that might fit quite nicely in another category like the digital category. Um, and so it's, you know, if you're already pulling together the information for, for one entry and you can duplicate it across another one, it's just going to double your chances of actually being recognized across the awards. So have a look and see if you can make your entry fit in more than one category. And we'll keep an eye out from that on our side as well and, and flag any potential uh, second entries that we that we could maybe recommend for your entry too. And I, I mentioned there um, in the video recording about providing a clear summary. That's the kind of initial paragraph that you'll give right at the start of your entry. That's just a nice snapshot of what your entry is actually about. It gives the judges a clear steer right at the outset about what, what you're going to be explaining in a bit more detail. But we, if you are chosen as a winner in the category, we'll actually use that summary as the basis of a case study. So it's good to have that um, nice and succinct. OK, um, oh, I've got a blank screen there just to explain what's coming next. We are really lucky that we have ha we, we have three judges that sit on each category and um, they are the best in the business experts in their field um, and ver have very kindly given up their time to be involved in the awards. Um, we asked a couple of our judges to provide short videos just to explain what it is that they look for in their entries. So I have Katie Doran from Lanyon Group and Stephen Patton from George Best Belfast City Airport are going to tell you what they're looking for in an awards entry. Hi, I'm Katie Doran and I'm a partner at Lanyon Group, a corporate comms firm located in Belfast City Centre. Last year, I was honoured to be part of the judging panel for the Business in the Community One to Watch Award. 
During the judging process, I was so impressed to see how passionate, people-focused companies are proactively putting their people first in ways which makes meaningful change within the world of business and the wider community. I have no doubt that this year will be just as difficult as previous years to decide who will be awarded as a winner in the one to watch category. But so that you can ensure your award stands out, I recommend that your entry really shows us the diverse nature of your strategy, the noteworthy results, and the lasting impact it is having on your people, place, and planet. I wish you all the best of luck with your entry, and I look forward to finding out which company will be leading the way in 2022. I'm Stephen Patton, HR and Corporate Responsibility Manager at Belfast City Airport, and I previously judged the Employability Champion Award. As a judge, a top tip for me when you're drafting your award submission is don't just tell, show. It's extremely useful as a judge to have all the evidence right in front of our eyes. Bring me along on your journey. There's nothing I love more as a judge than when I feel part of the story. You should also consider including testimonials from third parties. Hearing you shout about all your good work is great. Having others vouch for you is even better. And as a judge, I take notice of that. There you go. So there's a few really useful nuggets in there. And just thank you to Katie and Stephen for providing those videos as well for us. Um, to quickly run through how the judging process works to help you get your head around that as well. It, it's it's a really robust process. Um, it's a three stage process and all the entries are made and scored on the Judgeify platform. Stage one is internal shortlisting and that's carried out by business in the community and um, campaign heads and our project leads as well. Absolutely no marks are allocated at this stage for the next stage of the judging rounds and um, we just choose who is shortlisted and moves on to stages two and three. Um, if you are shortlisted, if your organization's entry is shortlisted, you will automatically go on to stages two and three. You're going to be involved in both. You won't need to do anything more for stage two. That is where our judges step in and will score the written submissions. Stage, oh, sorry, I skipped ahead there. Stage two is, um, it's really important, the written stage. It's 60% of the final scores that you can be awarded. So it is it really is worth giving um, the written entry your all because that's where most of the scores can actually be awarded. Stage three is our virtual panel interviews. They all happen online on Teams and we meet with uh, normally one or two representatives from a shortlisted organisation um, who will go through their entry and um, be asked questions by, the, by our judges and it's worth 40% of the final scores. It's a it's the opportunity for you to really bring your entry to life. We'll ask you to present for five minutes, no slides or anything. It's just a verbal summary of your entry. Our three judges will ask questions, maybe for a little bit more clarification on your entry. And then at the end of the day, all three judges will jointly decide, preferably by consensus on who the winner is. Um, so it's a 20 minute slot for our entrance to to be sitting behind that panel as well there is a business in the community facilitator sits in on those panels but um we're just there to keep help help keep time and to provide support for the judges if needed where we don't have any sway on the scoring or who, who the winner is at that point so for key dates you don't need to write any of these down. They're all on that hub page that I'd, I'd noted before, bitcni.org.uk forward slash awards. The most important date for you lot at the minute is the deadline for entries at 5 p.m. on the 29th of April to Friday. And there, unfortunately, there are no extensions. The platform just automatically closes down at that time. Um, I, I mentioned in the recording uh, of the and of accessing the Judgeify platform that you can dip in and out of, of your entry. So you can start it now and go back to it as a draft and you can submit right up to the deadline as well. We'll announce our shortlisted li our shortlist list on uh, week commencing the 17th of May. And 
look, even to be shortlisted for an award is a massive accolade. Um, you know, there, there's big competition across Northern Ireland for these awards. So when we announce our, our shortlist list, we will provide communications packs for those organisations that have succeeded in being shortlisted so they can communicate that with their, um, with their staff and with their social media followers as well. Our judging panels are going to take place from the 20th to the 24th of June. That's a week in June. Um, and it, it depends on your category when the judging panels will actually take place. It'll be a half an hour slot if you've been shortlisted for you that will take place on one of those days. And we'll set, once we know who the shortlisted organisations are, we'll set those appointments up and get them into diaries as well. And then lastly, the, the big event is our awards gala event. Um, we are so excited to be going back to a lovely glitzy gala event in the ICC in Belfast. It's happening on the 8th of September and tickets are on sale for that as well. So I'll give you a little bit more information about that in a sec. Just to let you know now, Brian, if you wouldn't mind opening up the chat function, because I've been talking for a while now and I'm conscious that people might have some questions as well open up the chat function, please do drop in any queries or questions that you have and, and we'll try to answer as many as possible. Um, and Brian can can read those out as well, so you won't be expected to come off your off your microphone or off your camera. Um, and so our gala event, we are, we hope you'll join us on the night. Um, it really is, in, it's a really interesting night. It's really inspirational and it's very heartwarming as well because you'll get to hear um, why the winners were chosen, a little bit more about the initiatives and just get a, a kind of a bit of a broader scope of what's happening across Northern Ireland. That is, of course, with a lovely dinner, really great entertainment um, and a few other kind of surprises chucked in there as well. So really hope to see you at that event. Tickets can be bought um, from the, the BITC Awards Hub page as well. There's a link there that will take you through to an Eventbrite page where you can request for um an invoice to be sent for tickets. So just to let you know that member rate is £140 plus VAT for an individual place and non-member is 150 Okay, so Q&A has opened. Brian, have any questions come through? Yeah, oh. Brian? Sorry. Yeah, no, the, the, sorry, there was just a wee delay there and opening up the chat function. So it's enabled now if anyone has any questions. Oh, okay, perfect. That's that's fine. Look, so if you have questions, me and Stephen uh, uh, seem to have a question here. Okay, that's perfect. I'll give you, it's fine. We're, we're in good time now anyway. There's plenty of time to chat about any queries that you have. Uh, Bethany just asked if there's a cost to enter the awards completely free all all 10 categories are free and actually what i meant to mention whenever um we're going through the categories uh, we've got the 10 categories but there's two new ones this year as well and um, we have the fair chance for all award um, and we have the climate action award as well so the other categories are ones that we have had in previous years but we've got two brand new categories this year too but every single one is free to enter any other questions um Stephen is still typing. Uh, Bethany just says thank you. <laughs> no problem at uh, all. Stephen says, uh, does the judging panel take consideration of the size of the companies and um, the means? In other words, a multinational will have a much greater or much greater resources to undertake yeah. community activities than small companies. Yeah, that's a really good question. And yes, and that's something that we I had a, a walk through with our judges yesterday as well. And it's a point that I raised with them too, that we do want them to consider those organisations that maybe don't have the resources, but are that are packing a punch. Um, and we completely appreciate that that organisations have have different levels of resources. So yes, the judges have been advised to take that into consideration. And in some instances as well, we've had a winner, but we might have had a highly commended in a category in, in recognition of the fact that um, an organisation is really going beyond its means to um, be a responsible business. Um. Uh, that's Brian. Steve, that's Brian's Stephen dog. Just, <laughs> just <to let> <laughs> yeah, yeah, another true. question. <laughs> Stephen says thanks. Okay. Yes, no and ap apologies if you can hear my little doggy. <laughs> if that's uh, if Bethany, that's all. Oh yes. I think Bethany is just typing in something else. No problem. 
Uh, just while uh, while Bethany's typing um, a question there, potentially, I'll just bring the, the link up on the on the website there. Just um, if you want to check out our awards hub page. Uh, Nicola says, can you confirm again when the project supporting the submission must have commenced or yep. concluded? February 2021 until now. So um, from, from the start of last year, basically until today. Or until the end of the awards period. If, if So the, the award, until the awards deadline period is up. That's the 29th of April. So that's a project that's maybe running at the moment that won't close until closer to the date the awards actually yes. launch this year. So if yes, yeah, so if you've started so. sorry. Yes, yeah, so if you've started the initiative from um or it's been running during the period from February twenty twenty one. So it might have started already, you know, previous to February twenty twenty one, but if it's still been running since February twenty twenty one, then that is eligible to enter into the awards. I hope that's clear. I think that's it from the questions. Perfect. OK, well, then all that remains for me to say is good luck, all the best. Um, there are contact details on our awards landing page as well. So if you need to get in touch with the comms team at BITC or the awards team for any reason, please do give me a shout. But in the meantime, thank you very much for your time this morning and good luck with your awards entries. And I hope to see some of you, um, not digitally, in real life at our, our gala event in September. See you then. Thank you. Many thanks. Thank you.